the Thomas Academy many years ago, Sergio was nice enough to, to invite me to his opening of his uh, Sergio Novello Academy. I was so impressed with it. I mean, he's a class act, you know, he does everything by the book, you know, absolutely. So I said, you know, what a great idea. Why don't we do this here also so we can help people uh, with, with it. So we are a nonprofit organization. There's no profit at all here. It's just for education. It's sharing and imparting knowledge, getting the very best of the world. Okay, you have no idea how lucky we are to be able to hear it real time from one of the world's best people, best in whatever they do. Time-tested and FDA-approved procedures and technologies will be discussed over the next couple of weeks. The next four months is chock block booked every Saturday, 6 p.m., the top people. And the first batter I've gotten is my dear friend Sergio, and uh, we'll short-term and long-term fellowships are offered, doctors from different specialties. We have an open-door policy. We, we welcome everybody to make sure things are done. And you know, I'm the mentor, uh, and I'm a DY Patil, and uh, I have started the Indian Association of, of uh, Cosmetic Medicine and Surgery. It's an interactive learning uh, platform, please join. And the Thomas Academy for Training. Now, without further ado, let me let the, introduce the esteemed faculty that we have. Needless to say, Sergio is one of us, Tony Mangabhar, George Kumpaparis, uh, I already mentioned Dr. Uh, Sergio Nuello, Dr. Robert Shumwe, Dr. Zoran, Dr. Peter Schmidt, Dr. Ian Ogonaldo, Angela Kuzelina, Mike Naik, Firaz Hamdan, Sunil Chilkuri, and many others. Okay. Now I'm going to take the I'm going to take the privilege of introducing today's speaker, Sergio Nuello. What can I say? He's an internationally known surgeon, innovative leader, and educator in cosmetic surgery. He is the director of chief executive of the Department of Cosmetic Surgery at the Milano Estetica Center, located in downtown Milan, Italy, in the heart of the fashion district. What more can I say? He's the most accomplished guy. I can keep on talking about him. I'm going to abbreviate some of it because it runs into pages. Dr. Novello is board certified by the International Division of American Board of Cosmetic Surgery, board certified by the World Academy of Cosmetic Surgery, and board certified by the American Board of Facial Cosmetic Surgery. He did his uh, medical degree from Milan University and after general and thoracic residencies at the major hospital, San Rafael, Medical Center. He did further training in aesthetic plastic surgery at Milan University in Italy and Bordeaux University in France, where he completed a master in aesthetic surgery. He attended the postgraduate school of Italian Society of Italian of Aesthetic Medicine and has intensive medical training in general cosmetic medicine, plastic surgery, general surgery, maxillofacial ophthalmology. It goes on and on. He joined the Department of Cosmetic Surgery of Luni Medica. Surgery Center in Milan and La Spezia in 2003. Dr. Nivella is an esteemed member of the Board of Trustees of the International Division of the American Board of Cosmetic Surgery, Board of the World Academy of Cosmetic Surgery, of the American Academy of Cosmetic Surgery, and the Italian Society of Aesthetic Medicine. In his career, he has performed over 8,500 cases. And believe me, it's gotta be absolutely fabulous. His results are amazing. Dr. Nivello currently serves as the president of the Italian Society of Aesthetic Physicians and Surgeons. He's a coordinator of the international faculty of the Italian Society of Aesthetic Medicine from 2014 onwards. He's been very active in organizing medicine, uh, medicine in organized medicine for more than 15 years and served as section chairman with the Italian Society of Aesthetic Medicine, an organization with two, over 2,000 members. Trust me, I was there as a faculty member I was just blown over by the number of people that came there, the respect he has earned. And you know, what can I tell you? It was a feast for my eyes. Okay, he has over delivered over 50 scientific presentations on all aspects. From 2004 onwards, he serves as a lecturer at the Postgraduate School of Italian Society of Aesthetic Medicine, 
and he's also 2014 onwards, he's a European Scientific Director of OTI. That's Oncology Training International. Now, he has, he has basically contributed a lot and, you know, in terms of wellness, aesthetic practitioners to positively impact the lives of cancer patients with compassion and healing. That's the other side of us. How do we heal people? How do you make them whole again? And the lives of cancer patients with compassion and healing has pioneered several training programs to be complemented. Traditional skin care that will complement traditional skin care, spa and wellness therapies. He's the founder of the Sergio Novello Academy, an institution born to spread to go to together with a pool of international experts and an excellent partner such as Mertz Pharma, Pharma Italia Institute. The knowledge acquired during these long years of experience and research, a pioneer of the discipline whose wish is to put the proficiency achieved at the service of science and the well being of patients. Now, going on, distinguished service awards during his career in cosmetic surgery, innovator, scientist. You know, he, he presented in the international literature on. BACT, that was bloodless atraumatic surgery or the atraumatic technique, the first scientifically confirmed technology methodology that enables cosmetic surgery patients to resume full duty activities within seven to 10 days. So the reoperation rates are low, complications low, you get much better recovery. He's also singular command of quality control, Milano Aesthetica in 2016, and has been the first cosmetic surgery center in Europe awarded the quality certificate by Q Med Aesthetica IMQ. Excellent mentoring skills as member of the International Editorial Board of the American Journal of Cosmetic Surgery, Journal of Plastic and Modern Techniques, member of the Editorial Board of the uh, Journal of Annals, Annals of, um, Annals of uh, Case Report. Dr. Nivello's uh, interest spans the entire spectrum of cosmetic surgery whether it be facelift, blepharoplasty, or rhinoplasty, autoplasty, breast augmentation, breast reduction, lifts, abdominoplasty, and with the latest innovative techniques as BAT, bloodless atraumatic technique on national and international patients. He is happily married, and I met his wife and kids, lovely family, and I'm, I'm glad they're safe in these troubled times. Uh, I introduce and bring to, today to the platform Dr. Sergio Novello. Thank you very much, Mohan. Thank you, really. I'm flattered by you know, your invitation. Thank you much, really. For those that are, that are locked in, I hope everybody can hear. If not, send us a, a SMS and we will type it. You know, we'll make sure you are able to hear it, okay? All right, Sergio, over to you. Okay. Okay. So, uh, do you want me to my question? Do you think it's time? Good. It's good. Yeah, good. Go ahead. You can start. I got it. So I go. Uh, okay. So I think uh, uh, you can really uh, follow my lectures. Uh, I. I'm sharing my screen, so I think that uh, on the, your uh, computer, my, my presentation. So uh, this is my disclosure uh, for me to disclose, and uh, I just uh, would like uh, to, uh, you know, invite uh, all uh, here to come to Milan and join uh, our academy and uh, to stay some day with us, uh, you know, just to share our knowledge. So, uh, I agree totally with uh, Mohan. Uh, I consider a very, very, a very important man in surgery. And uh, I know that knowledge is power. <laughs> knowledge is not ignorance, but it is the illusion of knowledge. So, uh, what is rheology? Rheology is a branch of physics with the origin, the nature, and you know, uh, all the deformation of materials under external stress. 
you know, in when your uric acid filler were used just to feel the nasolabial form. Raji, a signal is breaking. Hello, Sergio. Sergio, we don't hear you. Mohan, do you hear yeah. me? Ah, now I can hear you. Go ahead. Good, good, perfecto. Okay, so I will go back. Okay, so I will see that you know when you guess it used only to feel the nasolabial fold, uh, the public differences where you know they're not so apparent, and the of filler used. Uh, other facial areas wrote the realization that different products could manifest so different able to clinical see, uh, good, good, good. So, uh, you know, many many clinicians continue to use a single product for several different facial. However, in the recent past, some began to select different products for this clinical application you know the use of injectable yellow acid has become you know the gold standard uh, treatment procedure for aesthetic condition worldwide the range of products to choose from has also been you know greatly expanded share the same indication yet consists of very different logic and physical chemical profiles. profiles have an effective way to select which products are the most suitable for a given clinical. So let's talk about the factor, you know, uh, about, you know, the rheologic and the physical chemical property. Sorry, Sergio, your, your voice is breaking. Your voice is breaking. Just use your microphone if you can. Okay. Great. Fantastic. Uh, uh, let me see. Okay. Wait a minute. I will try to put on my microphone. Okay. okay great. Great. Thank you. Wait a minute. I just need to. Okay, Mohan. Yes, good, good. Oh. Awesome, awesome. My Is it better? Perfect, perfect, okay. perfect. Okay, so I will start again. The whole talking about, I was talking about, you know, the rheologic and chemical properties that are determined by many factors, including the cross. The molecular weight and the procedure. Okay. The form and aspect of cross linking together with the hyaluronic acid concentration determine the in vitro rheology and physical chemical file of the gel. Uh, you know, there, there are many, uh, many uh, features uh, in, in the hyaluronic acid filler. Uh, we must think of and we must know what is the elastic modulus, the G viscose modulus, the prime, the tan delta, and the complex modulus, uh, the G asterisks, that are the primary real parameters. 
So all hyaluronic health fillers product possess, you know, a combination of viscoelastic property. This is a schematic, you know, depicting rebound effect of elastic visco viscoelastic materials following the formation. And all hyaluronic acid filler possess these features. Elastic, viscous, and all are viscoelastic. So uh, the G prime captures the sound of numerous factors that affect gel strength. The G prime has become a relevant part due to the escape product. Okay, just uh, only two things about all these features. The elastic, the G prime, characterizes the ability to rebound to its original shape. Example, if we have a high, uh, you know, high G prime product, you must think about a rubber band or just a rubber. And if you think about a low elasticity filler, you must think about syrup. Higher G prime usually correlates with a firmer gel. What is the viscous modulus, the G double prime? The viscous modulus characterizes the resistance to dynamic forces. So high viscosity filler are like peanut butter. Medium viscosity filler, you know, are like honey and very low viscosity are like water. So higher G double prime gels are fair, requiring greater force for extrusion through a needle. The tan delta is less important. Uh, characterize the relative proportion of elastic to viscous moduli. And uh, just have to think about that elastic gels like gel have low tan delta and viscous gels have high tan delta. The complex modulus, the G aster, uh, characterizes the overall ability to resist to deformation. Another important feature is the gel cohesion that characterizes the capacity to remain intact and uh, not to dissociate. So these two, I think uh, we can attribute the gel cohesion to the attraction and affinity between individual molecules. So low cohesive gel dissociate more readily. And then another important features that we must know that we must start gel fluid uptake. They cut the ability to take up fluid. We can think about the swelling factor after the inject it happens that uh, as soon as we finish to inject the skin swollen okay that swollen sometime or most of the time is uh, uh, related to the swelling factor of a gel fully hydrated gel not really take up more fluid and another things that we must uh, uh, that we must, you know, start the A concentration, the total HA in one L of finished product. So how much hyaluronic acid we have in one ml. So differences, they reflect their, you know, the, the manufacturing process is chemical characteristic of a filler. So Let's look what is cohesion, the capacity to remain intact and not dissociate. What happens with these three different kinds of fillers? 
Okay, we add hyaluronic acid color with, you see, with blue in the water and add more water we can appreciate the cohesion of a filler. Look what happens with Nasha has very low cohesion, very low cohesivity. When we look at other people, the Vicros technology, the cohesion is different. This product are more cohesive. And if you add water now really can appreciate that the hyaluronic acid remain more intact and there are other hyaluronic acid like that, that those in the cpm technology that injected in the body injected in the skin or in the subcutaneous tissue maintain always their shape so the density to remain intact and not dissociate is very high look what happened if we water so this must uh, be in our mind when we are injecting because if we try to mold if i do uh, for example, uh, you know, to try to dissipate this filler that we have injected inside the skin. The NASHA technology will be easier, you know, to, uh, maybe to mold, to make it softer. With the CPM technology, the technology will be very difficult because you see that cohesion is very high and so the capacity to remain in it they will not dissociate the filler. So let's talk about elasticity and let's watch about elasticity. So the ability to to its original shape when acted on by dynamic stress. In the NASA technology, if we try you know, to uh, change the shape of a filler with a but with a lead, you see, it lose the shape. So this product is very, very uh, mold. Is you can mold it in a very uh, easy way. But if we try, for example, to change the shape of the fillers of the vicros technique, then you see that the product try to maintain, to rebound to its original. And if we go ahead watching uh, what happened in a filler dumping we can easily appreciate that the ability to rebound to its original shape you know, most is high when acted on by dynamic stress. And we must consider this important characteristic, this important feature of a filler, because uh, later uh, we'll, uh, you know, try to analyze where we need a different product. But it's easy to think that uh, if we need people to have a projection, if we need to have something stiff, for example, along the mandible or the chin or in the temple area, there need something that has a very high elasticity, okay? And in other, for example, the lips, the the right sides of the periomysure. And in that area, we need something uh, moldable, okay? So let's get viscosity, the resistance to dynamic uh, stress. Look, if we try to change the shape 
of the problem Nasha technology. You see, from outside, and we can easily change the shape. So we don't have to uh, uh, to dynamic forces, okay? Because we can easily change the shape of the product, okay? And then if we look at the Vicross technology, then we uh, rest to the and the resistance to the, this dynamic force is uh, more than before, okay? We can change the sh and the dynamic forces or the resistance to these dynamic forces is higher than the previous one. And with another technique where the C technology, we can easily, uh, you know, appreciate that the resistance to dynamic forces is very high. We try to change this, uh, the shape of these fillers, but it's very difficult. I mean, if we inject uh, a very viscous filler, for example, in the lips, and we have a small lump, and we ask the patient to, uh, you know, to mold it, okay, with the fingers, it be very, very difficult to solve the problem if we have injected a very viscous product, okay? So if we have, you know, enhanced uh, uh, projection or uh, volume, uh, or we have to uh, repeat the shape of the lips, we must think before and select the right product. So uh, let's talk about the practical reasons understanding uh, the, real, the rheology and the physical chemical properties of pillar. You know that today, the medical communities clearer understanding of the facial aging process has, you know, has given a more comprehensive approach to the use of filler in facial rejuvenation. And the range of product is continually expanding. We have many, many products that come in the market every day. You know, currently, primary product indication include cell implantation into the superficial to mid dermis, you know, to do, for example, the chlorides. Uh, we can inject the hyaluronic acid in a, in a submucosal thing. For example, when we uh, would like to enhance uh, the volume of, or we can inject mid to deep dermis we want to, uh, for example, enhance the nasal fold. And we can even go subcutaneous, superperiodontal uh, cheek augmentation. And if we want to, uh, you know, uh, create volume restoration of meat, we can, can we use to go very, very deep. But you know that today, we have uh, many advancements that include the correction of the temple, the correction of the infraorbital hollows, the correction of the infraorbital grooves, the nose reshaping, and the rejuvenation of many non facial areas, including, for example, the earlobe, foot pad, the dorsum of the end, the decolletage and many, many other areas of the body. So we can say that, you know, no individual product is appropriate for all this indication. Developing a familiarity with all these properties, okay, influence the aesthetic outcome. So all, all the doctors, all the surgeon, must know that these important features 
can improve the aesthetic outcome of the patient. Uh, let's look at what happens in vivo. Uh, let's give a the value, the product selection. In vivo, we have a combination of two type of forces on implanted hyaluronic acid filler products. We have the lateral shear or torsion forces and the stretch to compression forces. So the, you can easily appreciate the dynamic forces contribute the formation of hyaluronic acid product uh, when you have implanted them in the superficial dermis where the shear and force are, are higher and when you inject a product in the deep planes where the stretch and compression are higher. So the degree to which these forces, these forces act products on many factors. The plane objection, superficial versus deep, and uh, of course, the anatomication. Let's think about the tear trough, uh, the malar, the cheek, the perioral region. So uh, when we select acid, First of all, we must think about the skin quality. You know, this is an additional factor to keep in mind regarding the aesthetic outcomes that include the skin quality, degree of correction need. Uh, think about a patient with thinner skin where the product palpability is an Important is an important consideration before injecting. And so, in that case, products with lower G primes are generally accurate. Lower G prime, you know, are hyaluronic acid fillers, softer and more easily distributed in the tissues. Let's take a degree of correction uh, thinking about the plane of injecting. In general, products with higher G prime values are firmer and are indicated for deeper planes of injection and support a greater degree of correction, whereas lower G prime are softer or are indicated for more superficial plane of injections. So the higher G products are also for, you know, deep. Think what happens in the me third when we have to inject deep and and to and we need to achieve a good projection in the me phase. And for it, such as in our cheek, the chin, jawline, where the product can be placed again on the bow for injection. We need a high G prime product that will give us a greater advantage over a lower G prime product because of its greater resistance to compression forces. And let's think about all the anatomical location. For example, for optimal corrective results of mild tear trough in skin, skin, we suggest to use a low product, low G prime product, because it distributes an inter. We must think that the preocular area is the only area of this of our body where we have just three layers the skin the muscle and then we have a, just a very small quantity of fat onto the bone so in this case we must think about the anatomical location however 
for deeper tear trap if we stay on, maybe trying to stay under the periosteum and in the dead tear trap, we must use a higher G product for its greater lead capacity. That is an ideal option to have it. When of the are in patients with, you know, with help with a, a flat area here, the middle, we and if the patient had adequate skin, we must use a high product that is an optimal choice. Again, regardless of skin quality, sometimes we must deep prime press more effective for example for the nasolabial fold for the marionette melanental region where visibility on face action may be sometimes a concern so these intermediate G products are also for areas of facial animation and for you know, supporting and contacting the face. I just would like to underline that the nasolabial fold he injected many times past now is uh, losing importance because we have uh, learned that injected in the mid face in this area where we have you know, the malar fat And if we inject deep, you know, the uh, deep fat component of the middle face, then we can really create uh, support. We can really lead the tissue and we improve the aspect of the nasolabial fold without injecting them. The correction of periodides the barcode, you know, uh, also the, the also the perioral area is similar to periocular one because you see that we have very thin structures and the superficial fat compartment is very, very poor. In this case, the, the area is prone to dynamic stress and sometimes we don't have Thing, uh, skin fix so, uh, G prime product is not desirable for this challenge. And so, placing a firm product deep enough beneath the wrinkle sometimes will often not correct the defect but give anterior visible projection. In my experience, in, in the perioral area, an intermediate G prime product in small aliquot doses, maybe uh, you know we use uh, to add our filler. Uh, we, we use to dilute our uh, our hyaluronic acid. We can have more. Uh, you know, easy way to inject. Okay, an intermediate G prime product could be a very good option, even if we have to inject very, very superficial or indeed in the mid dermis for the correction of still periorite eyes and oral conscious. Sometimes we try to stretch the skin before injecting. And we can appreciate the, the importance of the, of the right eyes. And if we, the right eyes, these use something stiff. And if we are able, you know, to, when we are stretching the skin to uh, improve uh, the, the right eyes, in that case, we use a lower G prime product. So, uh, which are my conclusions in uh, thinking about real 
feel of clinical experience is gained in differentiating many products by you know uh, their rheologic uh, properties and then physiochemical properties Sergio, we've lost your audio. I don't know if you can hear Chris. Hello. How do you mean? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Raj, you have to control more the drip like that, no? And the level. How did you get that? I have to color it. 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 Mohan, are you on the call?
そうと思うやつね。Lohan, if you're speaking, I can't hear you. Mohan, I think you're muted. Unmute yourself if you can. Hello? There you go. Okay, all right. So here you have this lady. She's in her 50s, late 50s, kind of heavy on the cheek. She's got jowls. She's got a sort of a little bit of retronathia. She's got a, a, a gobble, a, you know, gobble neck like a turkey neck. So the way, at, plus she has these informal, you know, uh, uh, herniation of fat. Uh, perhaps the, uh, the brow is slightly low, but I can, I think, can get by it. So what would I do for this patient? I'd probably end up uh, doing a lower blepharoplasty on this patient, uh, debulk the cheek a little bit if I can, uh, reposition the mid-face, lower face, and definitely I would have to do a, a chin implant. And when you see a patient like this, you can be very sure that the fat is not only sitting on top of the platysma, but also below the platysma. So you're gonna have to dive down between the platysma, debulk the fat there, do a platysmoplasty, midline platysmoplasty, and through a traditional uh, facelift incision, you know, pull everything back where it belongs. So that's basically the, the, the long and the short of it. Now, would you like to add anything to this, uh, Tony? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, sure. I mean, um, a couple of things is uh, I, I'd probably want to evaluate her a little bit more critically because um, number one, I don't see platysmal bands. I'm not sure if platysmal plasty is, is the right thing to do. I, I agree with you hundred percent. The removal of the fat is, um, is correct. And the, uh, uh, the fact that she's got a deflated chin, it would be interesting if there was any kind of a photo of her when she was younger, because, a woman of her age and you know her weight it's likely that um you know she's lost a lot of volume or soft tissue volume in her chin so i mean you can see it in her lips as well she's lost that despite the fact that she's got some extra weight so i i think i would be a little bit more um you know uh, inquisitive about you know, the physical exam and if she's got a really low hyoid you know who knows that could be not much fat on the on the outside and just a low hanging hyoid that's not gonna give you much of a, a neck, um, or at least a cervical mental angle. Um, and I think that liposuction for sure would help Absolutely. in terms of getting rid of those jowls. Um, and then probably, um, you know, a, a face, a lower facelift. I'm, I'm not sure that a, a mid face is absolutely necessary given the volume that she has there, but again, it, you have to get in there and 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 feel it. So, I mean, she's going to be a, a difficult facelift no matter what, just because she's got a heavy face. And removal of fat and sculpting would be mandatory. And then I'd get her younger photos. I'd get a picture of her when she's 18 or 20, just to see her adult facial structure before any aging occurred. And that'll give you an idea of her brow is or not. 
and uh, what her neck used to look like before she aged. So, um, I, I mean, think, it, I think go ahead. The bottom line is that she, we all agree that her uh, chin projection is probably, should be a little bit more. She probably has a, a the higher bone probably placed um, lower. Um, and the liposculpting will definitely help her. So I agree with Tony, we'll, we require some, given that we have what we have here, uh, this is up for discussion, but younger pictures are probably a, a very good idea. Well, here's another picture of a lady, okay? Now she's young, she's got a whole bunch of For everybody that's on mute. Yeah, mute your uh, your your, uh, your uh, computers, please, because we're getting a lot of feedback. So if you look at this this lady very clearly, uh, you you have the temporal hollowness. You have the forehead, then you have broad cheeks, and we don't have any other views to see whether her chin is something needs to be done. But very clearly, a problem is more of a a skin resurfacing, getting redding, redding of the of the pigmentation, and perhaps using some sort of a product in the temporal hollowness, so she doesn't look so constricted in that area. I mean, I think uh, uh, in, in skin is her main issue than than anything else. She's probably in her you know late twenties or so. So, uh, any comments, uh, uh, Tony? All right, let's go to uh, case number three and see what we have. Okay, case number three. This is kind of interesting because, you know, this is a lady in her, you know, early 40s. You know, she's got a broad forehead. She's got some amount of fullness in the informal area. Maybe some uh, looseness in the upper lid. I can't really see. And, um, you know, her, she's definitely looks like she's retro, she's got some amount of retrogenia. When you see that mental fold and the angle of the way the lip kind of moves away from the mental fold, uh, you get the feeling that she probably is long, but her AP projection is not very good. Now, so what, what I would probably end up doing is, you know, I would probably manage this non-surgically uh, because um, I think, you know, if we put some, uh, the right G prime product in the areas that we need to uh, manage her uh, uh, right is a little bit. The depressor or his anguli is pulling down a little bit. Some BTX there would help. Um, there's really not much you can you can tell. Okay. Now I think uh, we are trying to get Sergio back on uh, while I while I'm trying to kill some time here. Anyways, uh, Sergio, are you back on? Sergio, are you back? Yes, I am back. Do okay. you hear me? Yeah, now I hear I you. I am back. Do you hear me? Yeah, we hear okay, you. Okay, that's great. Now, take this case, uh, Sergio, and kind of go over what you see yes. and how you would manage this case. Okay, so uh, we try to, you know, uh, all the times we uh, think to enhance the aspect of a, a woman's face, uh, just to recreate a novel shape of the face. So we we look at the we look at the temple in this case. Uh, we look uh, at the maybe at the uh, periocular area. Okay, and in uh, this case, I will uh, really uh, try to improve uh, the the shape of this woman. Uh, injecting in the, the I think uh, uh, looking at the pictures in, uh, in these two areas the temple and the uh, the tear trap so uh, what about the temple 
uh, for the temple. And also, I'm, I'm looking at this uh, at this woman and uh, by side by, by the side. And uh, I think that I will improve also the angle of the mandible, because uh, uh, that is an important uh, features of the woman face. In this case, I will use a, a very high G prime product for the temple. I will inject deeper uh, you know, in, a, in an area uh, close you know, to the uh, temporal crest uh, in order to avoid all the major vessels. There is a specific point where we inject uh, when we try to enhance the aspect of the, of the temple uh, if we would like to inject deep. And if we would like to inject in the temple area, with a product with a, an intermediate uh, G prime product, uh, we can uh, even inject very, very superficial, just under the skin, maybe using a cannula and not using a needle. And uh, uh, in that case, I uh, will try uh, to, uh, you know, recreate uh, the, the shape. Uh, of the of the temple uh, injecting uh, with a diluted uh, hyaluronic acid uh, again very very superficial just under the skin uh, in this area we must we must avoid to inject uh, in the you know uh, in the mid space uh, we must inject deep or very superficial because of the vessels, uh, the branch of the temporal artery uh, that is uh, always in the, you know, in the mid layer of the temple area. Uh, for the, uh, for the tear trap, I use in this patient that is a very young patient, I will inject very deep. I will try to inject with a cannula, uh, with a 25 gauge cannula and uh, I will uh, uh, go uh, just uh, from one point lateral uh, to the uh, periocular area and I will uh, try to reach the bone, I will follow the bone, uh, I will just release very small aliquots of product trying, you know, uh, to uh, create projection of the tissues in that areas. And uh, for the uh, angle of the mandible, uh, I will uh, inject, in this case, maybe very deep onto the bone, or if I would like, uh, I, but I need to uh, feel the skin of the patient, maybe I will inject with a cannula stain superficial. I just would like to uh, highlight the danger zone of the mandible. Uh, just uh, uh, suggesting you uh, to avoid the two uh, major vessels, the, uh, the, um, in this case, the facial artery and the facial vein. You must remember that the facial vein is always linked, is always against the, uh, the masseter muscle and in front of the masseter muscle. So if you uh, palpate the area, you will. Uh, uh, you will palpate the masseter, and then in front of the masseter, you have the facial vein. Uh, and uh, the facial artery uh, and the facial vein is very deep uh, onto the bone, onto the mandible. The facial artery is uh, not always in the same place, is very deep, is uh, onto the bone, but is, uh, uh, you know, uh, within the uh, mandibular ligament and the anterior border of the masseter muscle. So, uh, um, so in this case, uh, you must avoid to inject too deep in this specific area. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, the, ne the next case, one minute. Okay. The, I have another case coming up. Uh, okay, here's another young lady, she's in her, uh, early 50s. Uh, how would he manage this, Sergio? Okay, uh, this case, the first thing 
that I will uh, uh, try to enhance in this patient is the mandible. You see, uh, because she has a very, very flat angle of the mandible. So I, I will try to reinforce uh, the angle of the mandible, uh, staying very deep, in this case, trying to uh, recreate uh, the, 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 um, the angle of the mandible. You know, when we, uh, when we create projection in that area, okay, then we can really uh, create a lifting effect on the skin uh, that is of the lower third of the face. And uh, in this case, maybe I will, uh, uh, so I will inject deep uh, uh, onto the mandible and the, and the angle of the mandible and eventually also in a superficial plane just to create roundness of the angle of the mandible. Uh, in this case, maybe I, in this patient, I will try to recreate a novel shape. So also, you know, the, the, I think the middle third uh, of, the, of the face must be addressed. So I think I will inject uh, in a superficial plane uh, in the lateral mid face of this patient. And eventually I will try to, but I need to assess uh, better the face of this patient. What about the 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 the, the, the nose? Because I think she could uh, uh, improve the uh, nasolabial angle and the radix of her nose. Terrific. So the next case is kind of interesting. This is a a transsexual, a male to a female. Female. So yes. how would you go about this? You know, there are some real characteristics that we need to improve on to remove that masculine looking face and create a more feminine looking face. Okay. So in this case, um, the first things that we need to address are the eyebrows because the eyebrows are, you know, uh, really different from uh, woman to man, uh, from women to men. So uh, we, we, we need to uh, try uh, to elevate the eyebrows. In the feminine uh, face, the eyebrows are over, you know, the bony, the orbital rim. And in male patients, the, uh, the, the eyebrows are flat, and are at the level of the orbital rim. So in this case, we can improve the aspect of the eyebrows with the Botox injection, uh, trying to recreate a more, you know, curvy uh, aspect of the eyebrows. And we can uh, also try to inject uh, hyaluronic acid onto the bone uh, in the lateral aspect of the eyebrow because this is another important feature of the women, uh, the puffiness of the lateral aspect of the eyebrow. So uh, this is, I think, in this case, uh, the first things that we need to address. The second one is that if you look at this face, is a square face. So another, uh, again, we need to uh, create a novel aspect. So we, we need to address the uh, middle third, so all the malar area, we need to inject, in this case, very deep in the uh, deep fat compartments of the, of the malar fat pad, trying to uh, recreate roundness, a smooth aspect of the, uh, of the malar area, and uh, if we inject very deep, in this case, we can create projection and we create a lifting of the lower third of the face. In this case, if you see this patient, she has a very, uh, you know, square uh, lower third of the face. So we need to 
elevate the tissues, the lateral aspect of these tissues, trying to recreate a novel aspect. So um, she has also, um, you know, the, the commissure of the lips are midway from the alar base to the, uh, to the uh, apex of the chin. And uh, in a feminine, if you want to achieve a feminine look, we need to try to change uh, this situation because uh, you know the distance from the uh, uh, you know from the, uh, the um, uh, nasal base to the commissure must be one third, and from the commissures to the apex of the chin must be two third. So in this case, maybe we need to uh, try to uh, create uh, not projection, but we need to uh, give more height to the chin in order to, uh, you know, recreate roundness in this area. And uh, we, we, I will address uh, the, the lips also, and I would like to, uh, to look at the nose. In this case, the nose is very masculine. If you see, it's a big nose, and uh, uh, also the forehead, if you see, uh, is, is, very, is very important. Uh, like uh, in, uh, in men always. And so, uh, you know, uh, with aesthetic medicine alone, uh, we can do, you know, something. I think that in this case, maybe surgery could uh, really help us in trying, you know, to create a very eyebrow lift and uh, uh, maybe re reducing also the, you know, the distance of the forehead, uh, uh, maybe a rhinoplasty uh, could uh, be very useful in these patients. Thank you, Sergio. We are up to the next case. This is a lady in her late 50s, and she's a smoker. She drinks occasionally, and this is what we have. Okay, so, uh, wow. Uh, yeah. Older patient uh, than before, uh, in this case, I, I, I cannot see easily the, the, the quality of the skin. But, you know, when I treat uh, uh, older patients, I always try, uh, you know, to put less filler than I can, okay? So uh, I, I just uh, see that, I don't know if she has already performed uh, any, uh, you know, aesthetic medical treatments, because it, it, it seems that she has done a, a Botox yes, yes. injection in the forehead. Uh, you know, the, 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 the head of the eyebrow is uh, very low. Uh, the tail of the eyebrow is very high. But, okay, uh, I think that in this case, I uh, will uh, follow the same uh, harmony that is always in my head try to recreate a novel shape. So let's look at the, at the forehead. The forehead is uh, uh, maybe she has some lines. In, in these pictures, I don't see many lines. So I will try to improve the, uh, you know, uh, maybe the corrugator uh, right eyes. Uh, so I will inject maybe if she didn't, the Botox, or uh, I will try to inject uh, uh, very superficial in this area, the uh, uh, a very small quantity of hyaluronic acid in order to enhance the aspect of this deep wrinkle of the of the corrugator. I think that in this case, we, we, we in, uh, in this area, we must be very cautious because uh, we have at, uh, started from the midline, okay. Uh, we need to know that uh, uh, two centimeters from the midline, we have uh, along the, the orbital rim, uh, the sovratrochlear bundle, and three centimeters from the midline, uh, always on the periorbital uh, rim, we have the uh, sovraorbital bundle. So this area is very, very dangerous. Uh, if we want to inject hyaluronic acid in this area, we must be very superficial trying to do what you can with the, the Botox before trying to inject in this area. Uh, going ahead, uh, I will maybe 
try to recreate uh, you know roundness of the temple area okay uh, going down I see that she has uh, uh, maybe uh, something like uh, uh, swollen uh, in the periorbital area I don't know if she had injected in the past uh, uh, fillers or something like that we know that uh, injection in uh, uh, this area is very tricky uh, sometimes if uh, uh, we inject uh, uh, even botulinum toxin we can create these uh, malar bags uh, that are not made of uh, fat but uh, most of the times are only made uh, of water retention and uh, uh, because the lateral aspect of the uh, periocular muscle of uh, the periorbital uh, muscle are the 90% uh, of the of the of the strength of the of this muscle is linked to this area so when we inject botox for example we don't have to inject on uh, on the uh, you know maybe on the zygomatic bone uh, trying to reduce uh, the cross feet of the patient because of the problems linked to the uh, water retention so in this case we must be very very uh, we must tell the truth to the patient uh, it's not easy to uh, solve the problem of this uh, water retention and going down i think that uh, in the mid third she could improve uh, the aspect of the uh, mid third injecting very very deep trying to give uh, a support of the uh, lower third of the face trying to uh, enhance the aspect of the nasolabial fold and maybe uh, trying uh, to look at the patient from the side in order to uh, recreate as i said before the angle of the mandible another time uh, also we can try to create projection of the chin in order to recreate a better aspect a cervical mental angle very good Sergio thank you so much now we're coming to the second last uh, case uh, case number seven which is uh, the the heavy cheeks a young lady she's about 22 years old chubby cheeks okay so uh, this is a very you know very very a tricky uh, situation uh, you know in this case uh, we must really uh, inform the patient that with uh, uh, aesthetic medicine we can uh, try to improve uh, the aspect of the patient uh, without trying to uh, you know uh, change completely the aspect when we have uh, such a heavy face is very difficult uh, to enhance the aspect but let's look uh, you know I uh, usually um, speak about uh, the logical beauty harmony so I usually uh, try to focus my attention on uh, eight area so the first area is the forehead in this case is a beautiful one uh, she she has a very uh, I think no lines on the forehead. I will try just to elevate maybe the aspect of the eyebrows uh, in order to have a, a more pleasant aspect of the eyebrows. I will uh, uh, go uh, on the mid third, but in this case uh, the mid third is uh, very heavy, so we don't have to try to improve or to uh, you know, uh, recreate volume in this area. Uh, maybe I will try to uh, recreate uh, the bone of the lower third. So if we see the patients from the side, we see that she has a very flat chin. So uh, giving strength to the projection of the chin she can improve also the aspect for example of the uh, uh, double chin okay 
and uh, even if you look in the, uh, in the front of these pictures, uh, in the lateral aspect of the lower third, she's not oval, she has uh, some indentations due to the, you know, heavy uh, face, uh, to the uh, superficial fat compartments and to the deep fat compartment of his face. And so uh, trying to smooth, maybe staying superficial in this area with a small quantity of hyaluronic acid. But the two main things that I will try to do are, you know, the aspect of the eyebrows in order to give a fresh look and the chin will be my two major points of attention. Great. Thank you, Sergio. We come to the last case now. She's in her late 20s. She's concerned about her bags under the eyes. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, uh, I think that she, uh, she could improve the, the aspect of this area. I'm looking at the pictures uh, from the side. I will try uh, always uh, to uh, think about uh, the logical beauty harmony. So, I will start always with the forehead. In this case, the forehead is flat. So, uh, I will try to create a, a round shape of the forehead, first of all. In this case, I will try maybe to inject uh, uh, with hyaluronic acid, uh, intermediate G prime hyaluronic acid, uh, very deep onto the bone, uh, trying to, you know, recreating uh, roundness of this area. I uh, always uh, uh, highlight that uh, we must stay maybe two centimeters from the eyebrows because the in, in, the, in that area, we have the, you know, the, the vessels coming from the sovratrochlear and sovraorbital bundle. And uh, uh, after two centimeters from the eyebrows, these vessels are very thin. So uh, it's uh, uh, safer. Uh, if we inject in, uh, in this area, stay very deep and dilute your hyaluronic acid. One uh, ml of hyaluronic acid plus one ml of water, okay, in order to have a more fluid uh, acid fillers. Then I will go to the periorbital area. Uh, she has, uh, I think, very uh, deep uh, tear trough. So in this case, I will try to assess uh, which is the cause. Uh, if uh, uh, the, I, I don't think she has a very, very uh, thin skin in this area because she's very young. And so I will try to improve this area using an intermediate uh, G prime filler uh, of hyaluronic acid, uh, staying very deep uh, with a uh, 25 gauge uh, lead cannula. Uh, why 25 gauge and not uh, uh, smaller? Uh, because I need something uh, strong, something that I can uh, easily, uh, you know, um, drive uh, into the tissue, onto the bone, staying very, very deep and releasing small quantity of uh, hyaluronic acid. Maybe I will repeat uh, in uh, after two weeks the treatment in order not to inject too much uh, hyaluronic acid in this area. I always uh, try to assess if there is also, you know, pigmentation of the area because in that case uh, we can just elevate the skin, we can create projection, but we need also to address the pigmentation of the, of the skin. And in that case, uh, I will uh, think about peeling, about uh, maybe a laser or, uh, you know, uh, a, new, a novel uh, treatment that made in France that is called Dermamelan, uh, with a mask that we apply in this area that is very useful to solve pigmentation in the perioral area. And uh, uh, also I will uh, try to do something for the radix of our nose, you see, because the, 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 the orbital rim, the upper orbital rim of the patient seems to be uh, uh, very hard. We have an indentation 
of the radix of the nose. So in this case, she could improve the, uh, uh, this angle. Uh, so uh, trying to, uh, you know, smooth a little bit uh, this depression of the radix of the nose, uh, always, uh, you know, recreating a shape bar, oval, smooth aspect of the, of the face. Sergio, thank you very much. Did we miss any of your presentation? No. Okay, terrific. Now, um, what I want to say is uh, I can't thank you enough, Sergio. You, you have really walked us through um, everything you need to know about the G prime, uh, the intermediate, the, the heavy, and the light, and how to dilute the, the product, when to use the cannula, and when to stay deep, and when to stay superficial. You have addressed the eight points of, of uh, what you consider to be a harmonious face. And I think we have all become that much smarter today. I mean, looking at these things through your eyes, it's only when you hear people from different parts of the world and with their experience, you know, it's invaluable. So everybody listening to this will, will probably go home with a lot of pearls. Now stay tuned for more webinars every Saturday. You know, we have about the next two, three months all packed. Next week, we are going to have something on hair restoration. And the person who is going to be speaking about it is going to be Marco Barusco from Florida. And he's going to talk about something really neat, what is known as a long hair FUE technique. So we look forward to hearing you. And again, thank you from the bottom of my heart and thank you from on, on the bottom of all the patient people watching. Thank you so very much, Sergio. And the people that are on the, on, the, on the web right now watching, please do join the Indian Academy, uh, Indian Association of Cosmetic Medicine and Surgery. It's a fusion of art and science. Trust me, it's only when you hear experts in this area such as Sergio that it basically triggers things in your head and you start looking at aesthetics in a different kind of way. You need to be able to look at it as an artist. And Sergio is an artist. Thank you very much again, Sergio. Have a good night. Thank you so very much. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mohan. Thank you very much. I'll be staying very tuned. Thank stay, you. Stay, stay safe. You too. I, 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 you too. Thank, I thank all the participants who have been glued to this uh, TV watching every and casting, trying to catch every word of Sergio like I was, because it's only when you have the, the desire to learn and raise the bar for yourself and for others, will you improve in your field, keep things safe and keep things superior. Thank you very much, Tony, for being part of this uh, uh, webinar. You are, uh, you are an evergreen kind of person. We can always expect you to be around no matter what time. Thank you so very much and stay safe, all of you all, and have a good night and a good weekend. Take care. Thanks, Mohan. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.